Okay. So first of all, I just want to say um, welcome on the call. And it's always amazing to have um, guests on the call from other market centers um, um, and, and to share the experiences. And remember, and that's why we say hello and we are interactive. I can't always see the screen, um, but, but you're welcome to always interrupt me when you want to ask a question um, or say something. Um, um, I have added an extra slide here just for our pivot people to welcome Divan. Um, it'll be Divan's first training, hearing Rolo presenting. So Divan, welcome on the call as our team leader. And um, so I want to say to our pivoteers that are on the phone, uh, uh, on the call, please look out for Divan's phone call Um um, he he's, he's wants to get to know you all. And remember all the other guests that are on the call that we, that's why we have got Northern Cape and a free state and the Northwest. Pivot is the virtual market center that look after the agents that wants to buy into the opportunity of Keller Williams in the um, outlaying areas. So there where there ain't no Keller Williams close by, we look after them. Um, and we are an incubation hub to grow um, new teams and market centers. So the guests on the call, if you know of any, but um, and also important, um, must be a qualified person or at least three years experience or an FFC um, because of the PPRA um, um, laws. We can't do a rookie in the middle of nowhere um, because of the support. Malayne, please talk. I trust you have informed Divan about all the divas. Uh, 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 he's got a list, and I haven't. Malayne, I haven't. I said to him, Divan, you go straight in. So Divan is probably laughing and going, you see, here it's coming already. So Divan, you were also. Well, I love for you. 100%. No, I can't wait to, uh, to meet everyone. And uh, yeah, look forward to starting the journey. Thanks, Divine. Or Sam. Okay, here we are. We've all got the manual. So. The price is right. And I must say to you, in my 25 years of real estate, um, and being an Ian Doms agent, the estate agent. That pricing conversation is always that power. And listen, I'm, I, I'm a hunter in my heart. I like the chase and I like that kill. Uh, listen, <laughs> A for sale sign has always blown my hair away. But sold signs, man, do I love that. It's because of my knowledge and experience in walking in, in understanding the pricing and the expectation. Today we're going to figure out to price a home is a challenge. And, and let me tell you something. It comes with experience and we have got, we've got answers. We want to price homes strategically and successfully positioning them so that we can obviously win the mandate, win the listing. But, you know, I sit on private property, property 24 forever. Remember, I'm a recruiter. I am property crazy. I am a FBI a, a, a property professional. I'm too neskirig. So I stalk all the time. I think some of you that have been on my training, as I've said, that Sean and I will travel and we will get somewhere. And I first look for the little local current. And I check these agents and I, you see, private property, property 24. I play on it all the time. And you can immediately, when you look at a trend and you look at all the pricing and the quality of the photos, see who are the expert 
in the pricing and the presentation of the product. And this is a little bit of a in your face, okay? Like, let's do your IQ test, okay? I want you to now just think for a second and then ask yourself that question. How many of your current listings are overpriced? Oh, answer me the following. You have got a total book value in your spaza shop, in your mug and bean of so much value, stock on hand, which is 16 listings at a total value of 18 million in volume. If you really now look at all of your stock, honestly, can you say to me, out of my 10 listings, X is correctly priced and I'm going to sell it in the next 14 days. You are always welcome to be vulnerable and then share with me that story of Isherolo. Here's the thing I want to ask you about this IQ test as well. Honestly, beautiful photos, beautiful listing, everything is super lovely, sexy, what? Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, sleeping, sleeping, buyers, show houses. Eventually, you look at a time over task and you look at your hourly rate and you're realizing, man, if I was smarter in the beginning with the pricing plan, I wouldn't have landed up spending so much money. Because sometimes you get the Ayandom's agent that goes, <laughs> I'll just price it that this is the time Golding doesn't get the mandate. Uh, duh. You're not doing yourself a favor. You're spending your own money and your own time because of incorrect pricing. And for stuff to just hang there on those motel listing. Eh? I think there was a click click or a hand raised. Please talk to me. Rana, it was me, Derek. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I th you said be vulnerable, and and the reality is that my my price, the, the the homes that I've got, the listings that I have, are slightly overpriced. I'm new in the industry, and obviously I'm out to get the listing and not necessarily be hard when it gets to the pricing of the listing. So when I'm doing the listing meeting, I'm not strong enough yet to say. Mr. Seller, this is what I believe we should do and stick to it. Oh. Um, I still allow the owner or the seller to, to twist my arm to go up with the price instead of going in with the right price. Uh, twisting of the arm is not necessarily the right price. No, term. I know. I know. <laughs> you know, I know what I'm, I mean. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for being vulnerable and being honest because this is, and you are not the only one it happens to. It happens to everybody coming into the market. It happens to current agents that are purple rents queens that's been selling in the, year, in the area for years because they still want to control that mandate and then they still get that pricing when time over task becomes a thing and you look at your cash flow the the win-win becomes so so daunting if i can put it like that because if we start at the right price and we had the right conversations we won't land up at almost zero exhausted a year later there's another raised hand please talk to me hi it's tammy Yes, Danny. Rolo, what happens in a case whereby you've priced the home correctly um, and the owner is insistent on the fact that they want a certain price for it and you know that it's overpriced? Do you walk away from it 
or, or because it, it's senseless actually trying to convince them they are headstrong that that's the price they want for their property. Beautiful. Thank you, Tammy. Tammy, I don't want to answer you yet. You, um, my, uh, it's coming in my training. Um, um, uh, what I, what you, you know, what I'm going to answer you during the training, but please hang on to that because I want to come back to it. I don't want to spoil the moment yet. Please, Tammy, hold on to that one. No problem. Awesome. Okay. Was there any other raised stand? Let me just move the screen here. Right. Let's rock. So. Now. And this is like open heart conversation I want to have with you. Open heart surgery. You know, the goal is really that pricing is a mindset, but you have to be the expert in this pricing process. We can talk about to the things, how people think about pricing. Um, um, we, we're going to have those conversations today that Tammy was now just talking about, about the seller and their dreams and schemes and what, what. Ne? And we're also going to maybe that my systems are going to work or my comments are going to work. That is going to give you an aha to empower you into um when you walk into pricing so let, let, let's just first talk a little bit about it's going to be mindset some script to answer tammy seller and remember we have got systems tools the light stones all of those that is actually enabling you so that you can have a conversation with a seller we need to educate our sellers because this is what happens during pricing okay y'all please come market my home and then we walk in and we go uh, uh, oh it's lovely y'all let's take photos what what y'all um, how much do you want for the house okay 2.6 okay then we list you know i work at five percent uh, 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 and we have the listing does that look familiar does that sound familiar You see, then it goes quiet. Yes, please. There's a right stand. Raras, I do it differently, but I don't want to spoil your moment, so I'm going to wait for you to say what to do. I think I've got the confidence now to tell clients. Eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, Heidi, that 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 you share um um that. Because okay, and then can I tell you what happens now? Now it's an open mandate. You're now canvassing them on private property, property 24. Now Pam Golding and Rolston is now already there. Ne? It's already got it listed. You walk in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so everybody has listed it at that. Whoop, your ad just gets added. It's another one. It's just a, another listing that's on. Pricing happens twice. First, it happens with you. Then, it happens with the seller. I've put in the shift, um, take a note there, um, uh, tactic number seven. So if you've got the shift book, um, page 135, um, it is available in all market centers. They do have electronic copies of it. They can forward it to everybody. The pivoteers, it is in the library in the agent toolkit. Please take note there, tactic number seven. It's going to refer to this. You must understand there is enough tools for you to be educated from Lightstone, to be educated from private property, property 24, of everything that is in that market. You walk into 
a, 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 a listing and a pricing conversation already knowing what their price is going to be for this property. The seller does not dictate price. Uh -uh. You need to be almost bold. You know, there's that bold law that says, change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. If you walk in with an attitude that, listen, this is what this property is going to sell for. I am the expert. This is what ha I have sold. This is what I have on the market. This is the problem. Eh? So if you know already what you're going to um, get in, if, uh, in pricing from this listing, all you need to do is now educate your seller on the process on what we are going to achieve as a result. Does that make sense? If you, and, and I want to warn you, and we're going to talk about it more um, uh, uh, later, it's almost like you you want to resist me almost in saying, Rola, <laughs> it's not that easy, dude. You walk in there and you need that listing and you, you, if you really work your number and you know what the quality of your stock is, and if you are really the expert, when you look at your infantry, or I love that word, infantry list, ne? not a stock list. A stock list is what you get at game or pick and pay. In real estate, I talk about um, um, an infantry list. Oh, it's by grant for me. Ne? If you are really the expert, on all of those lights down information, please explain to me. I want to ask you the question. If you know what your number is, why would you go up and down and up and down to a listing that is overpriced? Tell me, here's what I would do. I'm going to educate my seller, explain to him the process, and then, whoop, sorry, then walk away. Something cannot be on the market for longer than six months. And the only reason why something doesn't sell is price. I want to talk here about, I'm on page uh, four of the manual. Listen, as a millionaire um, um, real estate agent, as a re real estate business owner, you need to get the units through. It must take. It's a number. It's an oiled machine. Ne? Like I said, like the mug and bean. If by 7 o'clock X is not happening with a kettle, the customer is going to walk past your shop. You need to get as many homes sold is your job. Not list them, <laughs> sell them. When it comes to pricing, that Ayandom Sargent, that is really the expert and understands pricing, uses the tools, has the mindset that, listen, I need to sell this house at X because that's X amount of commission for me will be equipped with script and information to educate that client towards the goal of getting it sold. There's that 14-day mindset. <laughs> I want to explain this to you, the mug and bean story, the 14-day mindset. You, as a business owner, as a millionaire real estate agent within the Keller Williams network, is driven gross commission income, unit size, volume. Ne? So everything must think, um, everything for uh, 
there must be every 10 days x amount of listings x amount of sales né? because we always refer to the four conversations how many contacts how many appointments how many listings how many contracts what's the profit Con the four conversations comes in here because if you have that 14 day mindset it is like Morgan Bean brings out uh, a poppy seed muffin. Like, uh, they bake 60 of it, Monday morning, sell four. Wednesday, they sell it at least another 10. Now, the freshness and the niceness is basically going to go down here by Wednesday, Thursday. You see where this is going? By Friday, they need to sort of go, <clears throat> Now, should we heat it up and maybe put a little cream on it? So luckily then they, um, you know, they score a couple of other customers that, but you can see the customer leaves the shop like, mm, you know, this poppy thing doesn't put, you know, it doesn't prove lacquer and the cream doesn't work on it. But listen, you ordered it, you're there. You know, it's not like you're going to judge mug and bean and just move on. So, <laughs> By the weekend, you are hoping, okay, may that last 30 just go, but now they're already risky. Nobody takes it. What happens? We throw it away. Waste it. So, the MREA agent knows when we walk into a listing we know what we want a price because we want to move on with it because it's on a rhythm there's a service delivery because there's a business and a number does the 14 day mindset make sense because if it sits on the shelves you are gonna have wasted cost you're gonna have to throw it away anybody want to ask me something about that So, it's always that price mindset. The only reason why something doesn't sell is price. But I've put there, there's not such a thing as infantry. Okay? Of course, here's my story. I can also introduce you to agents that have got stock, but there's not conversions. The conversions needs to happen because the longer it sits, you know, it starts moving to page three and four and then we reprice it. And then the listing is eventually eight months on private property and property 24. The negative is for the seller is going to get lesser and your commission is going to be half, half, or, you know. Careful that you don't know all the stock, but you don't turn them. We sometimes become the experts at the infantry. There are two best pricing opportunities. Okay. Just want to slide down here. And when you have this mindset of I get in and I need to move the stock. And I need to convert them. And it's all about the pricing to get them going. Right? You, you have got those two best options. When you walk in during the listing appointment and your first reduction. That's it. The moment we start going into second and third reductions and we start with parameter advertising on the pricing, it starts rolling into the bottom pages. The effectiveness and the convertible probable uh, uh, is, is running in a timing factor. 
If we then start going looking at what we've spent going up and down and on advertising it and telephone calls up and down, the probable income is then also very little. If we were just smart enough that the day when we walked in, we said, hola, this is at this price and hear me out, there is the price reduction. 90 days later, thanks for playing, we are here. So, to be able to have this holding and to be this mega agent mindset and this business owner, okay? And that's what I love about the six personal perspectives where we say you need to be learning based. You have to be the expert. Use the uh, CGI tools. Track the agent trend report in what you are listing, who you are dealing with, what is your convertible rate, okay? Identify your strengths with the lure report. This month I've done X. This month um, I've done X. I've had X on growth on this month, month on month or week on week. Whatever is going to work into your business and tracking. So it's important because you can use that as scripts during your pricing conversations. Listen, that be the local expert. I've used that picture there. Um, um, there's so many different templates that are available. There are so many different um, ideas around it that you can create around your specifics. But show the value and use the suburb reports on Lightstone. Dear client, this is what is happening in the suburb 2022-2023. There isn't such a thing like we want to test the market. There isn't such a thing like uh, yeah, no, I'm happy for you to lose my property, but I'd like 30 million in my pocket. When you understand, this is my, my book, when you cash up five o'clock every day, this is my totals, and this is what I need to achieve and the goal. If you educate your clients of what is happening in the market, what was the growth, what was the um, average prices? So, um, I'm on page five. Educate sellers with a talking pad. Now, this is what I, wa I want to... Uh, 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 we all do it differently, our mandate presentation. But there's a reason for a talking pad. You know, when you go into a listing appointment, what is the reason we go into that listing appointment? We want to get a correctly priced listing so that we can sell it at the quickest possible time for the highest price possible to earn our 7.5 plus VAT. You want to be the, the, the dream person that making the magic happen for that seller. I'm now talking about able, because they can sign, and willingly motivated sellers. I'm now not talking about those listings or that you've got, because Kuesa Nagi has got a plot, and let's just list the plot and let it sit there, and we just keep a line in the water because maybe somebody finds us. Okay? You that know your number, your CGI, that know what you need to achieve on the 25th of the month, that are tracking your success with your trend reports, knowing your lure report, what you've done this week, what you've done that month, understanding your 135, your 411, because, you know, we need to have this law of momentum, okay? 
and when I say this talking pad is This is uh, uh, that, you know, that key story, keep it simple, stupid, but we're not allowed to say stupid most, um, uh, 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 that, then they say it's ugly. That's not what it's meant. The ideas of a talking pad, put pen and paper down there. And when you make people write things down, they're creating their own goals in, and then you can draw and remember people are visually, you get there's amazing PowerPoint presentations and you can buy your videos and whoa. Keys, walk in, know your price, understand the process, be driven on the 14 days because you want that number to count for this month. And write, let the seller write down when he writes down the mandate. The talking pad I'm not talking about is the mandate. And then next to it, we're going to have the prices. So I've put in here, there's three prices for a home. A premium price, a market price, and then a wholesale price. What I'm also going to say to you here is that a property has five prices or, or, or values let's call it that values what the seller is willing to take what the buyer is willing to pay and what it actually is going to sell for on the market uh, hello and you are the one that is facilitating this process the other two i want to talk about is the one that government thinks it's worth, that one we would like to keep as low as possible because of the rates account, you know? Then there is the one, the bank value, because that gives you the credit worthiness for your financial planning or etc. Bonding and, you know, that for conversations is completely different. So, <clears throat> when you're going to sit there with a the client, you are going to then now you know already now know what lightstone says you know some agents walk in there and then they hoy the lightstone and then they want to talk from the lightstone and then the client scratches me right so you're gonna sit there very nicely hoy the premium price the market price the wholesale price and you're gonna draw the little line on the one side going to rent, to educate and explain to your client. And then you're gonna say to them um, um, at the top, you are going to put, let me just draw this thing bigger, yeah? There we go. Improving market. And then at the bottom, you're going to put softening market. Isn't it lovely words? I wanna show you these things so that you can use it as a tool in your pricing to make sure you're not wasting your time on getting that listing converted. Does that make sense? Yes, Mooi, dankie. So, right. yes, yeah. Mooi, mooi, dankie. Okay. Ons is nog hier, hè? Mooi, mooi. So on the left hand side, you're going to draw a little line and go, listen, premium is improving market. And then we've got softening market. And then very nicely put the trend. That trend we mean is this pricing and where we are at. It's got a, you know, there's a reason why we need to price it at X. Okay. Then on the right hand side, we're going to put condition and time model home at the top like clifton beach beautiful 180 degree sea view designer at the bottom we're gonna put neglect deferred maintenance so 
the vertical line with the trend and with that improving market and the softening market, we can all now also, uh, there's different interpretations to it. And that's where I wanted to say it is the mindset, the way you look at this pricing conversation so that you can know <laughs> what your result's going to be, that you don't want to uh, 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 sort of scare your client with, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, be too strong sometimes. So the interpretation of a softening and an improvement could be for in, in every market, wherever your area is different. So let's say you work in an area like Lone Hill. I'm talking from Lightstone now. Now, there's 400 homes in Lone Hill. The um, average sizes of the homes is the stands is a thousand squares. The houses anything between 250 to 300 squares. They all three bedroom, two bathroom, double garage. Some has got a lap and a swimming pool, and some has got a, a, a servants' quarter. Um, um, and then here and there is the art fourth bedroom one that's maybe 350 squares. The houses in the area is selling at anything between uh, 2.6 to 3 million. It is a favorable area because people want to be close to the schools in the area. But now, you want to explain to the client where your market is at. Is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? Now, we always hear people say, it's a, then it's a seller's market, then it's a buyer's market. Page um, 9, 10, and 11, please write it down in shift. Um, page 9, 10, and 11, we talk about the pendulum, the mindset of the way you look at the pricing. So, dear client, in the current conditions, if you look at what is on the market and at everything that is sold and your home is lovely, it will be a model home on the right corner and we can list it at premium. It is an improving market because there's lesser stock available, yet the trend will be the interest rate. So if interest rate and the trend is changing, your model home is still going to be at X, but the time is going to affect us, bringing us down to a wholesale. Do you like that wholesale word? Who likes that word? Yes, please talk to me. You know, the indication of I like that word. Yeah, I think it's the right word to use. Yeah, a, a, a wholesale. What, 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 is, what is that wholesale? I like that word. Because we, we need to educate our seller that if although it's a premium home and we want to achieve the 3.2 the scales at the trends it's going to bring us that we should rather the market at the 3 million because we don't want to land up because of time in the wholesale price the bottom line of what everything is going to sell for because you are the mrea expert you know what the interest rates are. You know everything that is on the market. And you should not always carry all the infantry. Remember, you should carry the homes that you want to convert. So, the pendulum of a seller's market, buyer's market. In a seller's market, your safest... When I say seller's market, it means there's lesser stock available, but also a favorable um, interest rate for buyers and location and opportunity.
in a seller's market. If you're going to list at the premium, it should really be that model home. It should really be that improving, um, uh, you know, the interest rates are going to come down, etc. There's going to be less of stock eventually. Where the market is at is where you are going to price. Entertaining premium model homes that are overpriced is costing you um, time over money. We should be at the market because our interest rates are going up and there is lesser stock. So there's a supply and demand factor because the probability of at premium, the timing is then going to miss the trend for the market's opinion. And you're going to land up in wholesale price in eight months down the road. Does that make sense? Can you relay what I've just said to a seller if you draw this picture and say, this is the fact. This is what the homes are selling. I am the expert. We have got an intention to sell your property. I get the extra square metrage. I get the pretty. This property has already sold with that pretty. Premium pricing in the, in the wrong market is going to create you wholesale value. Because listen, when they talk about a bias market, we remember about six, let's say this time last year, our interest rate was still very low. Everybody was running around still and buy, buy, the buyers are busy. What happened? The agents that are on the call, be honest. Tell me what happened this time last year when we had the stock, the interest rate was low. What did the buyers do with you? They made lower offers. If you priced ahead of the market and had a plan and knowing the market and knowing the trends of the pricing in the market you're servicing, you will not land into a wholesale. Days on the market, you know, we, we don't have that biometrics in, in South Africa like they've got in America, but there's the, the on private property, property 24, you can see how many days it's been on the market, etc. And let's say if the market goes up and the interest rates are going to start coming down again, then we're going to go to that premium. But at we pricing market seller, we don't want to land wholesale because buyers are forever in a buyer's market. If a buyer has got his ducks in a row, it is the trend, dear seller. The buyers have got access to all the information out there. The risk at putting it on premium and the buyers know what is on the market. They're not going to respond to your pricing. They're going to make lower offers. We're going to land at wholesale price in any case. Any questions? I'm on page eight of the manual. Anybody want to ask me anything? Does this make sense? Is there anybody that wants to say to me, Rolo, I'm having an aha. If I've maybe drawn a picture for my seller during the listing appointment, we would have been at a better pricing conversation by now. Please talk to me. Roland? Yes, please talk. 
I just want to know, most of the times the buyers tend to pitch at the wholesale price, regardless of high interest or low interest. Is it just my perception? Because I always like to negotiate. Yes. So I'm going to answer you there in a, that buyers are always looking for a bargain and they are going to make an offer. You know, people's money can only go that far. You are aware that when you walked in with the pricing conversation you've had with the seller, okay, you are going to say, this is the days on the market. This is what is sold. This is what is currently on the market. You're going to have that same conversation with that buyer. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the offer you would like to make. But this is how the pricing trends in the current market in Seaward Estate in Belito is working. I am going to just present and discuss your offer, but my seller and my mandated agreement in our pricing conversation, this is how we got to a market-related price. So you even explained to your buyer also the trends. Yes. Thank you. I like when I talk to the buyer, and I must now have my light stones ready. I know what, because during your viewing and during your buyer consultation, you must now get information from the client and dragging it out and how much available that we have to sell, etc. I share my light stone reports with the buyers, everything. Mm -hmm. We, we're not secret agents. We are experts in a service delivery. Share the information with the buyer and say, dear buyer, the reason why this property is priced at X is, A, there's so many properties available in the market, number one. Number two is the pricing conversation with my seller was based on the following. Thank you for your offer, but we will then. It's a conversation again with your seller because you educated your seller on the expectation. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Inay. Malayne, talk to me. Malayne, I can stand. You can talk. Malayne, unmute yourself. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I said, yeah, in the Platteland, it's a bit of an issue because most of the people are investors. So you cannot sit in front of your sellers and explain things to them. The boor comes to you and he says to you on the telephone, this is what I want for my property. That's it. You don't, you cannot face him and speak to him and explain the whole situation to him. They just don't listen to you. So it's rather a difficult thing in in the platteland in the free state uh, specifically so that is that is the challenges that i have here ha. malayne thank you for the vulnerability whoop i love it guys if i lose you for a second it's just because we're gonna kick you out sharing let me just then switch over but i'm not disappearing malayne you will have to empower yourself with script on conversations on pricing i respect and understand the boot and um, that's what i want for my home etc so guess what you're gonna hang on to it you're gonna take the listing you're gonna be time over task because three months later it hasn't been converted into a sale it's going to become a poppy muffin in your mug and bean and not even cream is going to make it nice. It's going to become a wholesale property. It is very, where scripts come in. And what I've seen is uh, 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 um, WhatsApp, little screenshots. So it's kind of, you know, take this little idea and do make your own little template that for those, then you share it with them on um, um, a little screenshot and say, Harvey, this is your home. I understand you're an investor. This is what's happening. Um, Malayne, and it's amazing to share your Lightstone report on WhatsApp.
because then they can open it and one can talk them through the trends. Um, if I've, I hope I've answered you and given you a solution there. Thank you, Rolo. Um, um, Heidi, talk to me. So, Malayne, I also want to give you an, an answer there. What I did once was I um, also had a very difficult farmer um, and I had a buyer for that property, so I need to get that property at the right price. So I asked him to come and visit him for one day, even while he's still working. So I got with him in the bucky. While he was driving on the farm, doing his work, I started to explain what's going on and yeah, eventually got the right price. So, but you have to have time to do that though. Yeah, thanks Heidi. Just the farms around there are quite far out of town. So, um, not, not only that is, as I said, it's more investors and then they'll tell you, okay, well, this was just my investment for my son while he was studying and I don't really have to sell it and they give you that story. But yes, we do get by it at times. Thanks a lot. Love it, love it, love it. Love the interaction and the sharing. So, um, in your mind and in this conversation about the pricing, because it's very important, it relates to your income. There's also that extreme shifting market. Listen. Tom Cruise can buy tomorrow in Marloth Park in Hoodsprite. And it will be the talk of the town. Every second person would want to have a property in Marloth Park. How do you like that story? Does it? You see the fantasy here, okay? market conditions the interest rate can might what well, we don't know can come down drastic four homes in a in a street can come on the market in a week because of different scenarios and stories in those people's lives so in extremes, you should always have a future premium, a future market, a future wholesale. You should always know what is my worst case. And I'm going to get to that. That future market, future premium, future uh, uh, wholesale price. Let's look. There's a raised hand. Please talk. Yes, Rolo. Um, I think Helen raised her hand first. I don't know if she want to go first. Okay, I'll go. Rolo, um, what do you do in a case where you have um, a, a seller that wants to sell, but you don't have any recent sales to compare um, that property to? Why would you not have recent sales? Where is this property? In Bryanston. So the estate has never had sales since 2018. You can't only work on the estate. You need to work then on the bigger suburb because then uh, an estate on its own cannot uh, facilitate a trend. The estate yeah. is probably part of a total suburb. Yes, but there isn't much, and the the you know the the homes that um, have sold are not really, um, what's the word? Um, they don't. I'm trying to get the right word. They don't look um, or not as close to what this current property looks like. Are you Understand talking me? about condition? You, um, the finishes. And so I think she's this, talking about comparison. Yeah. Comparable property. Uh, so, so if you look at the comparison, so what you say to me. And the what, F size as well. If you then you look at what is in the bigger area for sale, then you're going to start comparing the condition. And then lastly, you start breaking it down in the square meterages to be able to get a premium price a market price probable and a wholesale price in the event um, it is overpriced. Does that make sense? How good are you on Lightstone? I think I'm quite good. Um, I'm not. 
social now. It's 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 intri- Please have a look at Lightstone, not in Bryanston, sweetie. Somewhere, something in your searches or the way you do your reporting in Bryanston um, on the souls and what is on the market. Uh, let them just help you there. There is tools. Somewhere, something doesn't. There is comparables that are going to help you, especially in Bryanston. I've got it. Thank you. Um, there's another raised hand. It's me. Talk to me, please. Oh, I was just gonna say something to Brenda about that. Uh, the when they when the people are not selling in their area, um, I'm not good in 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 comparison and all of that. But one thing that would make the property sell, if people haven't sold since 2018, that means people are happy with their suburb, they are happy with their estate, and they are happy with their homes. So that's another big selling point for people. Because if people are selling every day, there's a lot of people that are asking, why are people selling every day? What is wrong with that estate or with that area? So if people are not selling, it's a very good selling point because they are happy day. Wow. Thanks for sharing, Knox. Really appreciate that. Thank you. I've got another raised stand. Michael, please talk. Hi, Rado. Um, I was talking to a seller yesterday. He's got an apartment um, for sale that's been on the market since October, and it's with two other agents. He said he's happy for me to also market it. Um, I think it is slightly overpriced, but I was thinking it's worth having, taking the listing just to have my name out there on Property24. So I've only been in the um, industry for six months, um, and I was thinking it's good just to have my name out there, even if it is slightly overpriced. Did you hear me there? Sorry, Michael. It was just mm. change over from the load shedding for me. Can you please uh, repeat that? I I, yeah. I went off there for a second. Please repeat. No problem. Sorry. Uh, it's, a, it's an apartment that's been on the market since October. It's with two other agents. Um, I phoned the seller. He said he's happy for me to also market it. Um, and I think it is slightly overpriced. But my thought was that I've only been in the industry for six months and it's Good to get my name out there, just just to see my my advert on Property Twenty Four, so people see that I'm there, um, even though the property is overpriced. Michael, I 150% support that. We are all about listings, leads, and leverage. The three L's. Yes, please. You know. As you grow in the industry and you grow in knowing your numbers and having more sales and listings and units, you are going to learn and get confident in pricing and become picky on what is the stock that you want to focus on because of the conversion for the money in your bank account. The more, I, I, please, I don't say don't take the stock. I'm saying with these conversations today, empower yourself, guys, that when you walk in, you know what the expectation is. You know your market. You know what your pricing conversation is going to be. The probable on a, on a high market or a lower market because of the convertible income. So let, let, let's just look at that. I don't know. Draw, draw yours from your um, my age. Look at your current inventory, the total stock you have, times the average commission, times the anytime income. Now, why is it called an anytime income? Because that's there. If we drive the pricing on that current infantry it becomes sellables 10 listings times x so you sit with a value of five hundred thousand rands income in your book how long is it going to take you at the current pricing to convert that into true money in your bank account ask yourself that question listen and and, and i want to say this to you that 
being the expert the, it takes you're going to learn it with confidence over comes with confidence over a period of time it's not easy to say to a seller Leister, at 3.6 x is gonna happen we are x in the market is the the normal market price around here it's going to land up over a period of time into a wholesale. You're the one that's going to lose. I still work at X fee. Okay. And like I said, you've got one time to price it and you've got one price reduction. And then it's going to start snowballing into a wholesale. called the slash and burn program monthly and i'm sorry please guys this is millionaire real estate agent this is business okay open heart surgery create a one list pull your one list report of all your stock from my age put it on that excel spreadsheet you can download it in all different formats Put your eyes over your total stock. What will be the selling price you honestly think it's going to happen on? Right then, maybe down to it also, the bet your life price on it. Listen, somebody has to tell the truth. To the seller like the medical doctor that has to tell this patient askis we we have to take your brain um um for you know um surgery what about that like the mechanic that needs to say uh, <laughs> sorry for you dude the fan belt it's gegaan. 12,000 Rand, thanks for playing. We as agents grow with confidence. And I want to empower you with that message really today is where you need to look at, like you're looking and revisiting your 135, your 411, your goals, your plans every month, cashing up your business, looking at your trend report. You also need to look at your stock list so that some of the poppy muffins can be thrown away. Use, op I say four option scripts there. But what I mean with the four option script is this is the price, this is the price reduction, and that is where we're going to be. Thank you, Mr. Seller. That is my service delivery. Like, buyer, this is what we've done on this property. That is why we have um, priced it at X. Happy to entertain your offer and discuss it with my client um, in the negotiations. But my seller and I've had this conversation. I can tell you now my seller is going to make a, a counter offer. Empower yourself with the script on pricing. This is where we are at and this is where we're going to land up. Be aware of what the holding costs are for your seller. That time one. Some sellers are in the market, but it's busy costing them so much money, the holding cost on that property because of overpricing, that when they do the calculation, if they eventually then sell it at wholesale and what they've spent for the six months on it, they start chunking like a baby because they didn't listen in the beginning because you agent, premium price, this is why we are at market price. We don't want to land to a wholesale because of time and holding costs. Reduce, retrench, and release. Roll out. Hear roll out about your pricing when you do your listing, your infantry check. You either reduce it. 
the train <laughs> such a, but I like the word <laughs> it's like thank you for the opportunity and for the employment but we will not I will I'm not going to be doing this anymore dear Sala you have to understand I am running a business and at overpricing I'm going to have expenses on marketing your property and negotiating and communicating on your behalf to all the buyers at this point of time this is what the conversation is about the buyers i've had through this is the feedback on your property this is the probable office you need to tell the truth reduce retrench or otherwise release it is okay to also walk away from a listing it is okay you eventually running out of steam you eventually running out of feedback for the seller because you don't know what to say anymore that yarn yes sorry the market is this and i haven't had any inquiries for for three days you won't have any inquiries it's overpriced the only reason why something doesn't sell is price I, I, I've put that uh, on the manual. I'm on by state. That's the picture I've put there. If we see the pricing of the current infantry in your book and also the infantry that is on private property and property 24 in your area. It is so important that it, 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 private property, property 24, everything that's for sale should tie in with what all your listing is in the total infantry. Should tie in with what the souls are. That data base, that data you're collecting. There's the pricing. I call it price black, black, price red. You should have a price and a probable. If you go and do a stock infantry, uh, stock, look, I don't, I don't like that, but if you do an infantry uh, the report from your um, uh, my age and you look at all of your pricing, what is that ideal price as a business owner you can give me by one o'clock so that we can convert it? And how powerful would it have been if you're going to look at some of those listings and you're thinking, man, if I had this conversation with this client about where we are at today about this pricing, it would have been through the bank already. Listen, everybody loves their property and they, um, uh, 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 they think it's the best and their best investment, etc. Um, and I've put the one I've put in there the updated return retail price is in your feedback to sellers because evidently they're paying your commission, and always in your feedback to your sellers having price conversations all the time always have that update that when you feedback your seller you're going to say um hi john um i have had two inquiries but both of them won't be qualifying for the property at the market price we are advertising at the moment i just want to inform you that Jessica Street 19 has now been sold and has got an offer on it at 2.8. Whether it's you, whether it's another agent. Update the client all the time so that they are the whole time aware of the probable pricing in the suburb. Listen, marketing sells homes. I get it. But a property can just hang there and it just doesn't sell because of that pricing. And that's why it's so lucky to say to the seller, is, and I talk about motivated sellers. I talk about a seller 
that I has to sell the D's. Let me let me let me just put it straight. The D's. A seller is only motivated for the following: death, date, dollar, divorce, or uh, death, date, dollar, divorce, and desperate. There's the five Ds. If you can identify two during your listing and pricing conversation, you've got a motivated seller. So you need to bring your seller to the understanding why pricing is important is that then we don't have to negotiate too much. Then we know. It's listed at 2.6 and we're taking offers at 2.6. Me as the expert will educate the buyer why we're not taking lower offers. And the buyer, educate your seller and saying, listen, the buyers are not stupid. They know what is happening in the market. Smart sellers sell quickly for better prices. Look at the trend of the properties that are sold in your suburbs where you work and look at who are the agents that are selling and who sold those properties they pin it very nicely you will then learn what was the price it sold for what the trend is and that was not on the market for very long correctly priced properties with motivated sellers sells in that 14 day plan Because you're a top agent and an and a MREA agent, you, you bring skills to the table. You bring that education to the buyer to say, really? <laughs> I'm the expert in see where they state and you want to insult us with a lower offer. Thank you for that. But this is so perfectly priced. We've only been in the market for X. Happy to entertain because it's going to be an counter offer from my seller. I think there's a raised hand. Talk to me. Yes, Rollo. Um, I was under the impression that, you know, different price ranges sell um, at different uh, amount of time or period. For example, um, I was also told that, you know, pro properties under 2 million would sell fast than properties that are worth like 15 million, for example. <coughs> Sorry. And you're saying 14 days. Is it 14 days across the board? If I'm going to answer you, I'm going to answer you the following. Um, it's not because properties under 2 million sells faster than properties than 15 million. It goes about the area. It goes about the prices and the availability of properties in that area. It is, there's not an audience for, a, there's not a, you can't believe that properties under 2 million sells faster. It's not that. It goes about where is it? What is the prices achieved? How many properties are on the market? How many of them sold? Then you can determine what, you know, what the pricing in that area would be and the probable income. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Um, I can show you um, suburbs in Cape Town where 15 and 20 million rand homes sell correctly priced, right area, seven days sometimes on the market. There's not a rule it must be sold in 14 days. It is for you to have the mindset that when you go in with the pricing, it's like you want to push it to get it done in 14 days. Quicker conversion, quicker money. And when I say the marketing of individual homes is to keep the seller of our back. And, and, and it's probably not the best English, but it's where the soul mandate story comes in. He who controls the stock controls the market. There's no point 11 agents are on the listing, then there's something not working, probably pricing, probably the quality of the ad. 
if you are focused on the correctly priced listings in your book because you don't want it to land up being a poppy seed muffin that needs cream and to be thrown away and you focus on the individual convertible listings it's going to show the sellers um what, what I mean, keep off your back is because overpriced listings, the sellers start phoning. Why am I not hearing from you? What is happening in the market? Why are you not bringing buyers to my property? And then the agent goes, yeah, but the market and the but and the but, but, sir, but. And dear seller, the following, yes, dear client. I've put in there and I'm coming back to the two week story. If there's no offer in two weeks, we are overpriced. Let's, I, 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 I'm, I'm probably a little bit strong there. It is really just to give that urgency of understanding the, the probable outcome of incorrect pricing. What I want to rather say is if it's on the market, it's mandated and there's not a reaction and an offer in the current market, worst case, 30 to 45 days, price is wrong. Price is wrong. Club. 90 days. That's what I love about my age because they must only give you 90 days to extend the listing, which forces you to revisit your stock, revisit the quality of your ads, revisit your pricing of why your stock is not converting. Any questions for me? Any aha you want to share with me? Yes, please talk to me. Hi, um, Rolo. So, um, like Michael uh, previously said, he's also new in the industry. Um, but it's yeah, it's something I was just thinking about. Isn't this an opportunity for him to maybe make use of this model to get that um, seller that has been on the market for a long time with the other two agents? Um, in the right price for two reasons. One, he said he wanted to get uh, his na name out there, then he can actually do it by adding some value. And then secondly, he can, he can practice the model. <coughs> Yay, look at that. Well done. Thanks, Divan. Yes, please. Guys, pr the more you practice this on your open listings, you can then, when you bring the answer, the reason why it's not moving to that seller, you're going to tie the mandate and start controlling that, Michael. Great one, Divan. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Divan. 100%. Thanks, guys. Tammy, talk to me. Okay, so here's a scenario that I'm faced with in an estate. So we go according to the Lightstone and we go according to the sales pricing um, in the estates. Uh, what happens in a case where clients have overcapitalized on their properties and they're expecting that money back, which is never, ever going to happen. Classic cases. I've got a, a house in the estate. I'm going to interrupt you because this is the answer. Okay. You cannot take the blame for their dreams and their choices because they have overcapitalized on their property. You are the real estate professional in the area and are going to bring the probable price. Um, we estate agents are not in the business of financing probable dreams of sellers um, that is overcapitalized or doesn't want to renovate their properties and they've got dreams. Um, Tammy, walk away from a listing like that. Um, it would be lovely to have it if it's a lovely listing, but it's going to have a negative implication on your book, your convertible book, because in six months' time, it's going to sit there. Your time over task, your hourly rate, it's not worth it for it to sit there. Dear seller, um, that's your expectation. That is what happened. Then whenever... I do have somebody that would really find it interesting and I will then phone you. Um, again, focus on the individual listing that is going to convert into money. Did I answer you, Tammy? 
Uh, yes, you did. Hit me with more. So what happens in a case where it is actually an exquisite home and had it been in another, I'm not saying the estate, the estate is actually a very good estate, but most of the houses sell in the region of uh, between three, three and a half million to about four and a half. Five is pushing it, but this house is now priced at six million, but the finishes are exquisite. Sammy, sorry, it's not going to achieve it. Um, um, they've overcapitalized. They, they have created a lifestyle around the finishes for it. Now the question is some, now you're almost saying to you, but Rolo, somebody is going to appreciate the sexy and all the finishes, etc. Why is that somebody not there yet? Because of the price. You can't spend time on hoping and dreaming for your client. There's a pricing on a home in an area um, and a probable sellable price. Um, I, it, it, Tammy, you're not the only one that's happening to you. There's a lot of us that are sitting with that art property that is this glam and is going to achieve a higher price than the seller really wants to. And that's where I would use the parameters in my pricing conversation and say, listen, you are at the top of it. This is where the market is going to be. Anything in the timing or the market trend that's going to change is probably going to either take you to there or the problem is we're going to land up over a period of time at the wholesale price. And then your seller needs to be aware of it. Educate your seller. Hope I've answered you there. Perfect, you have. Thanks. Brenda, talk to me. Yeah, Rolo, my biggest aha, hey. Um, I've tended to shy away from properties that are um, of higher value, Where, you know, because of what I, of the question that I asked. But yeah, I'm looking at it differently now. I just, I'm just also thinking the importance of having um, a specific era that you work at and, you know, um, learning about the area, knowing, you know, as much as you need to know, it, it, it would be easy um, to price when you know um, and you work the area. So thank you so much. I'm going to move away from um, my limiting belief. <laughs> awesome, you. awesome, Brenda. That's a very good point. Thank you for sharing that you talk about there. We always say start small to go big. Um, and I understand we are open areas, open listings, and we're chasing listings, etc. But when you are really becoming the expert in your lead generation, knowing everybody in that suburb, the pricing, what is selling and what it is, it's not like, you see, it mustn't just happen like that overnight and you think I've got 16 listings and now we're going to turn. You must also at the same time understand the value of your book and can you convert it. So running after listings all over Joburg um, is not going to have an con effective convertible number. Helen, talk to me, please. Rolo, can you make work? Yeah. Okay. Uh, ek werk in die lanseria omgeving, waar daar redelijk ontwikkeling gaan plaasvind. In die Hi, Helen. Hello, Brenda. In die no, I can't hear you. Yeah. Can't you hear me? Yeah, so, sorry, I can't hard. understand. Sorry. Sorry, Helen, you must speak English. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Brenda. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I work in the Lanseria Noitsedag area where there is going to be development in the next what, 5, 10, 20 years. So now I have sellers wanting to sell their farms and their small holdings to like, develop this pricing. And at the moment, we're not getting it. So, yeah, so I have somebody that has a piece of land with some buildings and an aviation training center. And she said to me, the developer offered the 23 million and she wants now 18 million for the property. And I keep on saying to her that the properties in the area are not selling 
at what you want. Even if you uh, look at what you have, what the property has, has to offer. I mean, I sold a property in the area that offers similar what she had for 3.5 million. That was also eight hectare. So how do you turn her around to understand the developers are not here right now to buy? Boy, in Helen, here's my conversation. What does the title deed say of that property? Is it just a normal four hectares, whatever size, <coughs> with a house, whatever it is and how it is zoned at that point of time is what it is worth. Okay. No developer is going to pay you a probable future price of what it's going to be. It's called land banking. But to be aid, developers are not going to just do land banking. Look at the market conditions. We've just busy moving into the next shift <coughs> because of the interest rate. I know development is going that way. Then she's going to sit and have to wait. She's going to wait a very long time. If it is an agricultural listing at X, there's a value to it. Want you a plot. If she has already subdivided and changed the zoning of it, then it becomes a development calculation and evaluation where the square meterages and the probable ROI. Um, and then we start getting site planners and engineers and quantity surveyors in to have a probable income and um, what will happen. But what it is there today is what it's going to sell for. Sorry for you, Mr. Seller. Hi, Rollo. Sorry, it's Anthony here. Yes, um, Anthony, please talk to me. Just my sort of two cents worth there regarding what Tammy was saying as well, what she can use, even though if she, if you look at that 6 million rand house, you, you, the, the, the trick is to bring the, the competition in as well. It may not be in the same complex, but you can say to the person, if you had 6 million rand, would you buy here or would I go and buy on Umschlange Ridge where I can also buy a place for 6 million? You know or wherever it might be but so you've got to look at what you can do with that money the same goes with the small holding you know if someone is selling something for four million why would they pay over ten you know so it's it all comes back to competition really <coughs> correct it's about what what my money can buy me for well what, what i can get for my money <coughs> sorry is what you're saying is that and buyers have got options and we have to educate the seller and say listen with overpricing comparable of what is out available there they are going to pick other options anybody else that wants to talk to me nigel i think you had a raised hand Rolo, um yeah i didn't think it was relevant but i have a property which is overpriced i've spoken to the owner about it he's got pam golding and harcourts and Seif, and he's told me unless we all concur he's not prepared to drop the price he wants us all in the same sort of boat so i've got a show house scheduled for this weekend i've invited <laughs> him to come because it's a vacant flat he lives somewhere else so i can then have this conversation in his own property with him as like a one-on-one -on -one. um but any suggestions nigel i um um the seller is busy here now playing one agent against the other and to see which one um you know is going to bring him the quickest the results this is my answer dear seller this is what I'm offering in my process of marketing your property. I understand the others are also listed on it. But he's now busy negotiating you. Now it becomes a Seif versus a Nigel. Nigel, you have to take power, um, your power back over the conversation in your service delivery. Meneer die verkoper, this is what I'm going to offer you. Thank you for the show houses. This is my pricing. This is the mandate. If a seller starts playing agents up against one another, 
because they want to get results. The only person that's losing um, is the seller at the end of the day. Okay, thanks for that. Um, I, I know it's not the greatest answer you wanted to hear, but I hope I've given you the right answer, Nigel. Well, the way I pitched him was to consider what everybody says because you originally got us all in because you respected what we would bring to the table. Right. But at the same time, you need to respect what the buyers have and they live on these property portals. So I need you to drop the price to another price bracket. And he's refusing to do that. So I'm just saying, look, you, you've done this. Um, I'm the last person to pick it up. So it's been on the market since September last year with, with uh, Pam Golding. So I picked it up now in January. And I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah, you know, maybe it's a waste of time. You're overpriced. It's, sorry. Uh, this this property is not going to move. So I'll put it on show. But come and have a conversation with me. Come and talk to me face to face. Yes. Nigel, I would use my Lightstone report to show the facts and the stats and the implication of the longer we are in the market, the pricing is going to come down. Because um, eventually you're going to look back at this nine, six months down the road and you're going to go, I've had it on show, Pam Golding has gone through it. I've had now this pricing conversation and here we are yet no office. And then you're sort of going to feel, oh, I've put all the time in, etc. Take it on, have a conversation, get the price right because it's a convertible that you you know you want to convert the number. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rella. Well, Sam, do my silly ID talk to me? Okay, so this topic is always a difficult one: uh, the pricing of the property because the owners actually get agitated and angry at you as an agent because they want their price. So the way I do it is they ask you, so what do you think can I get for my property? Then I immediately I'll say, it's not what I say, it's what the market say. I can't tell you the price. The market is telling you the price. And then I just pluck out my light stone and then I'll show them and tell them, you see there, on average, your property is actually on the market worth that amount. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you for sharing um, um, that it's always that softening approach in, in the price. Listen, we all, it's like practicing script. The more we do something, the better we're going to get at it. And the more you learn to have pricing conversations with people, we are forever having pricing uh, conversations with people actually um, in our daily existence. We're just not always aware of it and the effect that it can have on our convertible business. Lady, please talk to me. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Rolo. I wanted to um, put in the strategy that has always worked for me with regard to the pricing. So when I, when I come in, I will uh, bring the light stone and ex also explain the reason they wanted me to also come and assist. And then I will let them know that, okay, if they, they are, they, the property has been in the market for this long, at this price, it means uh, everyone has to make the changes. And then I then asked the owner to say, kindly send an email to everyone to reduce the price to this one that we have agreed upon. So what I usually say is that at this moment, our client is the property and we need to take care of the property so that it look good. And if everyone has different pricing on it, then it will stay another three months and it is to their loss. So when I remove everyone else, that is myself, as well as the owner and focus on the client who is the property it always works then the email get to be sent and i also contact the fellow associates whether it's palm golding whichever who are working with the client and i then explain our client is the property so let's all agree on putting it down so that we can all have a fair it can have a fair chance of being sold it has always worked 
and I thought I will just pitch that in. Thank you. Wow, love that plan. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you are really there coming from contribution and acting in the best interest of your seller to take ownership of educating not only the agents, but also the clients on the pricing and the process. Well done, well done. That is unbelievable service and an unbelievable strategy to be able to start controlling the correct price um, on a property. Love it. Thank you. Anybody else that runs an action plan or something you want to share or talk to me about? Any questions? Guys, I really then appreciate you. We are ahead of the time. Thank you for this morning. I really hope I brought you. Oh, there's Melaine raising hand. Melaine, talk to us, please. Rolo, I just want you to please remain on the call. I need to discuss something with you for five minutes. 100%. Perfect. I can you leave your bell on your telephone, Melaine. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I can leave your bell on your with the loud shading. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Helen. Thank Guys, you. I'll That's see... great. Thanks, Rello. We'll see you next week, Tuesday. Thank you for attending. I'll put the video out, YouTube, all of that later. Thank you for everybody that was sharing as well today. I really hope there's that bell that's gone on and you understand the urgency of re-looking really at your stock value and is it really going to turn into money and what you need to do to have those pricing conversations with your sales. Have a good week. Just, just. Thanks, Thanks Rolo. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.